Here's a little picture of the security triad that talks about confidentiality, integrity, and availability. And uh, so now that we have uh, looked at these key goals then, what I'm just going to do here is, is sort of summarize. I, <laughs> I, my images may be a little uh, corny, but hopefully they get the general impression of fire. The column, uh, the column on the left is for the sa fire safety, and the column on the right is going to be for the computer safety. Um, so now that we have a basis then for understanding both fire protection and computer security, we're going to look at them from three different perspectives prevention, detection, and containment. And this has been actually, as I've thought through this fire issue and fire protection issues, it really seemed to naturally divide into those three areas, prevention, detection, and containment. And that's been helpful to me even to think about those three issues in computer security as well. Uh, so what about fire prevention? Well, some of the main ideas with fire prevention is we want to minimize the ignition and fuel sources. Um, we also want to educate the occupants and the operators. Um, so whether we have a facility, a structure, we want to educate those um, operators and occupants. And, um, and we also want to develop emer emergency procedures, and that would include um, notification uh, for response and emergency evacuation. So some of those uh, key ideas in fire prevention then, what we want to do is we want to take steps to minimize ignition and fuel sources. And some of us that are going through either the rebuilding process or have gone through the, the process of making our homes more uh, fire resistant know that we want to remove those ignition sources, um, combustible materials, uh, particularly near the structures, and replace shake roofs with fire resistant materials and stack firewood away from the house and keep the vegetation trimmed and cleared. Uh, and so that is uh, in, uh, in fire protection. We also want to, in fire protection, render materials more resistant to fire. And often that's done by applying a layer of a resistive material. Uh, and in this case, we're seeing someone uh, spraying gypsum-based plaster uh, to render uh, structure more fire resistant. So that's another way in which we do um, fire prevention. Um, and now let's look at computer systems. Well, an ignition source, when we're talking about ignition sources in the realm of fire protection, um, the, the, the corollary that I saw there was a vulnerability in a computer system. So a vulnerability is a point at which an intrusion can begin, just like a, um, a, an ignition source is a place where a fire can begin. Um, an intrusion tends to have two underlying causes, a vulnerability and then a malicious attempt to exploit it. Um, so a system with vulnerabilities is a target for intrusions, just like a house with a lot of fire hazards is a target for a fire. Um, so what we have to do in a system then is to reduce those vulnerabilities. Um, and uh, so, so we will, um, apply a process um, that is hardening the process. Um, we, we might get rid of unnecessary software or logins uh, in the same way that we remove unnecessary flammable materials around the house. We might disable or remove unnecessary services. We'll also apply uh, layers and, uh, say, security patches uh, to the system as well, and will involve a, a number of different protection techniques. Um, here's an example, a couple of examples, actually, of security layering. So I talked about spraying on a layer of fire-resistant material. Well, often we'll add a security layer into a computer system. And the figure on uh, the left here, the blue, is actually from some of my work where we're actually layering uh, different protocols together to provide uh, more security. Uh, the other thing that we do in terms of fire prevention is 
to uh, establish procedures and to do education. And in particular, at Westmont, uh, we had been told way prior to the T fire that the emergency plan, uh, the place uh, that we were to go in the event of an emergency was the Murchison Gym. And uh, so we had that plan in place, we had practiced it, and so that education and having those procedures in place was absolutely key in the fact that it was uh, such an orderly um, evacuation, even in the midst of uh, uh, you know, the fire coming so rapidly. Um, so also, in computer systems, we want to educate our users. Uh, we want to uh, uh, teach them proper security precautions, um, choosing strong passwords, keeping them secret, not opening suspicious email attachments, running antivirus software, all the types of things that uh, you have been told. And um, also in computer security, we also develop incident response procedures. And here's just a picture again of the students in the gym, uh, which was that uh, designated uh, evacuation site. So now that we have looked at prevention, let's look at detection. So that's the next uh, step. So detecting a fire can be as simple as a single person smelling or seeing smoke and dialing 911. Uh, you could also maintain a fire lookout in a tower. Uh, you could use an aerial patrol, or it could also be quite sophisticated. Uh, for example, you could have sensor networks, uh, and these are in existence, uh, sensor networks that detect a temperature rise or a change in humidity and smoke. And uh, the infrared scan scanning could be used to detect that heat signature or carbon dioxide that's produced by fires. Uh, and brightness and color change detection can be employed as well. Night vision capabilities may be incorporated also. Uh, and so that information, okay, so that information then can be uh, transmitted up to a satellite, and then the next figure on the right is uh, uh, transmitting, and then down on the left here we've got the satellite, and um, then uh, the satellite can then transmit it to a central receiving and dispatch center, that's the bottom right, and, uh, and so you can have very, very sophisticated uh, detection mechanisms. And notice that in these detection mechanisms, what we're doing is we're taking the observed conditions and comparing them with a signature, with a normal pattern, with a heat signature or a normal uh, level uh, of that uh, variable. Uh, similarly to using pattern recognition uh, in the, to identify the fire signature as an anomaly, you can also have an automated intrusion detection system. And you can do that by comparing anomalies. Okay, so comparing the, uh, the activity with the system rules or behavior profiles. And so then you can detect intrusions by these atypical behavior profiles, uh, by, by violations of security uh, constraints, and by monitoring for these specific patterns of activities. Uh, so you can also attack, uh, uh, detect attacks from atypical use of system resources or special privileges. So this is a little picture then of network intrusion detection. Um, in uh, network intrusion detection system may include both anomaly detection and misuse detection. And so to sort of uh, 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 fine tuning exactly what we're looking for in what case. And so, uh, so again, I see a pattern here of similarity between the more sophisticated types of fire detection and the computer intrusion detection systems.